Hey guys, here is lesson 5-5. Five, five. Use sharing to divide two digit divisors. All right, so today we're going to be looking at using the standard algorithm with dividing two digit divisors today. So the first problem that we see is the recycling club has $294 to purchase one set of recycling bins for each of 14 members. For each of the 14 sets of bins that will be identical to each other and cost the same amount. What is the greatest amount they can spend on one set of bins? Use objects or draw pictures to help you solve this problem. Explain how you found your answer. So I'm going to underline my question. What is the greatest amount they can spend on one set of bins? So they have $294 to spend and there are 14 members. So we're going to take our $294 that we're spending and we're going to divide it between our 14 members to see what the greatest amount would be. All right, so and I tell students when we start doing this, you're thinking about it just like your standard algorithm with one digit divisors, except now you have two digits. Okay, so I have 14. I know that 14 will not go into 2. So then I scoot it over. Will 14 go into 29? Yes, it will go into 29. I know it's going to probably go more than once, but I think it's going to go twice. But to check myself, I'm going to come to the side and I'm going to say 14 times 2 just to make sure that's an 8. That's a 2. It's 28. So 28 is less than 29, so it will go into it two times. So 2 times 14 is 28. And we're going to subtract that and we're left with 1. Now again, just like your standard algorithm, you're going to bring down your 4 and I'm going to do it again. I know that 14 will go into 14 one time. 1 times 14 is 14. Subtract it and I'm left with 0. Okay, so the greatest amount that they can spend is $21. Okay, now let's go to the next one. All right, so we're not really looking at this part up here. They do give you a diagram to look at, and they show you it with place value, which is what we've been doing. Um, they also show your remainder can be represented as a fraction. So in this case, there was 21 cartons, and there were six eggs left over, so we would put that over 12, so it would be 21 and a half. Um, cartons. So this this one at the bottom, solve the division problem 47 divided by 11 and express the remainder as a fraction. So that's what we're going to do. So we have 11 going into 47. Okay, I know that 11 won't go into 4, but it will go into 47. How many times will 11 go into 47? Well, I know that 11 times 4 is 44, and 11 times 5 is 55. So 55 would be too much, so it would have to be times 4. 11 times 4 is 44. Subtract it, and I'm left with 3. Now, that 3 is my remainder, so I'm going to put that as my numerator, and my denominator is going to be my 11. So it would be 4 and 3 elevenths. This goes to the numerator, and this would be your denominator. Okay, that's all you have to know, know about that one as representing it as a fraction. All right, let's go over here to number one. If an orchard has 200 seedlings and 12 are planted in each row, how many rows will be completely filled? Now, it says to draw place value blocks. I'm not super concerned about that as long as you can divide it. So we have 12 are in each row. And there's a total of 200 seedlings. And our question is how many rows will be filled? So 12 going into 200. And we can work that one out. I know that 12 can't go into 2, but 12 can go into 20 one time. Because I know that 1 times 12 is 12. When I subtract it, I'm left with 8. Then I'm going to bring down my 0. 12 will go into 80 how many times? This is why it's so important to know your um, multiplication facts. So I know that 12 times 
6 is going to be 72, so that's less than this. And 12 times 7 is going to be 84, and that would be more than this. So we'd have to go down, so that's 6, and 12 times 6 are 72. Subtract it, and I'm left with 8. So that would be a remainder of 8. Now, we have, we're going to show it as a fraction. So I want to, because that's what I want y'all to do from now on. So we have 16 remainder 8. So there, 8 goes as your numerator, and your denominator would be 12. And the question 2 says, what does the remainder represent? So the remainder would represent the eight seedlings that were left out, so you can't make another row with those seedlings. Those were the extra seedlings. Extra seedlings that won't fill another row. Let's do another row. Now, if we had gotten more seedlings, we probably could fill it up, um, but we would have to get another four to fill it up. Okay, now this next one, they're wanting us to divide and they just have the boxes for us. So now this one, 14 will go into 19. Well, we know it won't go into one. It will go into 19 one time. One times 14 is 14. We subtract that and we're left with 5. Then we bring down our 6. 14 will go into 56. Well, I don't know my 14 facts very well. So I'm thinking let's try 3. So over here at the top, I'm going to do 14 times 3 and see what that gives me. It gives me 12. 3, 4, that's 42. I don't think it's close enough. Let's see if we can do it another time. 14 times 4, that's a 16. 4, 5, that's 56. That's right on the nose. So that would go 4 times. 4 times 14 is 56. And then when we subtract it, we would be left with 0. So our answer would be 14. Okay, um, and then the next one, 80 will go into 7, it won't go into 7, it won't go into 76, so 80 will go into 766, how many times? Okay, so let's think about 8, if I have 8, how many times will 8 go into 76? How many times will 8 go into 76? Hmm, let's think. Well, it's probably going to go into it about 9 times. So let's do 9 times 80 and see what that gives us. 80 times 9. Again, we're left with our 0. 8 times 9 is 72. So if I have 72 and a 0, 720, I subtract it, I'm left with 6 and a 4. Do you see that, that number is still less than 80, so I did it right. So that becomes our numerator of our fraction. Whoops, I didn't put my 9 right there. I need to put the 9. Whoops. And then our denominator is the number we're dividing by. Alright, any questions? Hopefully you're good. Um, so what I want you to do is let's go and do number 5 on our own Let's do five. Actually, I'm going to let you do on your own and then pause it and then we'll check it afterwards just like we did yesterday. So go ahead and pause it and then check your work. All right. If your answer was 16, you got it right. Yay. And remember, you can go back and check your work by multiplying your answer times the number you're dividing by. And it should give you your original number. All right, so let's do number six. Again, I want you to pause and then check. All right, so this one was nine and 44, 61. And 44 over 61. Good job if you got it. Yay. 
These are going to be a little bit harder. It's going to take a little bit more time to do because they're such big numbers and we don't know our factors. So you would just multiply 61 times and it might go into it about five times. And then if it's not even close, then you would go up. So that's why it would be nine. All right, last one. I want you to go ahead, do it, and then check your work. All right, this one was 32, and 8 over 11 is your answer. Yay, if you got it. Good job. All right, so the ones that I want you to do at the bottom, I want you to do 9, 10, and 12. I just want you to do three at the bottom. Do those on your own. Flip to the back. I want you to do number 14, number 18, and number 19. Okay, 14, 18, 19. If you don't get to it, don't stress. But I do want you to try your best on these, especially the ones on the back. Those word problems are, um, they hurt sometimes. But we got to do hard stuff to get better. All right, once you're done, I want you to go ahead and I, depending on what we're doing that day, I might get y'all to hold it and then we'll check together or I might get you to bring it up to me so I can check. Um, so just wait for directions on that. And I do have a friend that was helping me again today. She was sleeping the whole time, so you might have heard her snoring, but that's okay. All right, have fun. Good job, guys.